All right, so I am using a development build here of NeoVim version 0.12, and I want to show you a new command that's available, the restart command. And so to illustrate this, I've got a little scenario here. In the middle, you can see I've got this alias I'm setting up. Basically, right now, I've got this bar alias set up. Watch in the command line down below. Typed in bar. Once I hit a space here, you can see it expands into dev windows. So I've got that set up here. This is just using a function I've got up above here, a little helper function to create an abbreviation that expands. Anyways, I want to change that. Let's say I want that to be foo instead of bar. And so right now, if I put in foo here and hit a space, you can see obviously it doesn't do anything. That's not defined yet. So if I come up here to my configuration, change this over to foo here. Now go ahead and save that then. If I come down here, of course, foo is still not going to work yet. And that's because I have to restart. And so watch this here. If I just run the restart command here, look at that. Nothing seems to have changed, but if I do foo now and hit space, it expands into dev windows. And if I go back to bar, the one I had before, that one doesn't expand now. And that's because I literally changed my config, I saved it, and then the restart command almost instantly restarts the server that's running behind the scenes that actually has the core or the heart of the NeoVim application. And so that's a new feature in 0.12 means you can change your config now and you don't have to actually go and manually quit out and then open it back up. Instead, it just do it automatically for you and you can stay reattached with this client here. It just opens up a new server in the background. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna split the screen here so you can understand this. All right, so if I look at my processes over here, just do a grep here for NeoVim. You can see there's a couple involved here. I've got 7183 and 7184 here. There's the two primary processes I want you to focus on. If I do a PS tree here, so you can see the hierarchy. All right, so ignore this branch down here. This is that child process here, 7184. I just want you to focus on 7183 and then 7184 here. So if you notice the command that was used on the top one here, that's NeoVim. That's the command that I launched at the command line. So that is the client, if you will. And then the other one here that's embedded says mvim dash dash embed. That's the server process. And so note right now that is 7184. And if I come over to NeoVim here and I do a restart here, what do you think happened then to those processes? All right, so let's run this again and find out here. So as you can see, I've still got 7183, just like before here for the client, but look on the server side, I've now got a new PID. And so that's what happened. It actually killed off that old server process and then started up a new one. So this 7184 here, that was the previous server process. And now I've got this one right here. And you really don't see anything because it updates so quickly that you can barely notice the flicker there as it switches over. And if you want to know more about how NeoVim works in a server and client mode, I think I'll make a separate video about that. For now, though, I just wanted to share this. I think this is a neat way to modify your configuration and quickly test it. Don't try to hot reload stuff. Don't try to just change something and reload one little piece of it. Just reload the entire configuration. In fact, if you've seen my other videos, you know I have a command set up here so that I can just reload everything with F11. I'll be wiring this up once 0.12 is released to actually use this new soft restart, if you will. It's actually a hard restart because the process is getting rebooted, not the client process, but the server process. It was, I'll wire this into my F11 because I don't think I'm gonna have a need anymore then to quit out of the client, unless maybe something went wrong with the client. That's gonna be a one-off problem. In that case, I would just quit and start things back up. And if you wanna get your hands on a copy of this, let me hop over to where I've got this checked out here. Here is the Git repository. Basically, you need to clone this. You'll need to install a few dependencies. You can find that information here in the build markdown file. For example, on macOS here, here is a section for the dependencies that you'll need. Install those dependencies, and then you can go about the process of building. I think they've got that listed down here somewhere. Maybe not. And it's just going to be a CMake build, if I recall correctly. Once you've done that, then you have the executable inside of a build directory inside of bin here. You'll see there's a new NeoVim command. And now if I were to run that, grab the version, you can see that's 0 0.12 though system-wide. Obviously I'm using 0 0.11. And so just make sure you update your path to point at the one you wanna use. I set up this little helper method here just to switch me over. Essentially just modifies my path. And so now when I run it without pathing to it, I'm using the new 0.12. So that's a nice way to experiment. And if you wanna see what that looks like, not saying this is perfect or anything, but this is what I set up here to quickly test this out a little function in fish shell here, you need to modify it for other shells. But basically, I point out the repository that I checked out that I built inside of, I did not do a make install because I still want to use the 0 0.11 because that's the stable version. Instead, I just built it inside of this directory. So I've got the build there. So I'm going to point at that location. And then I'm going to update my path. I'm going to put that on the front of the path here. So that becomes the priority or the default. You can see here if I do a witch and a NeoVim, Right now, of course, that points at the one in the repo. If I grab all of the matches, though, you can see the secondary match here would be my 
homebrew install, which of course would be 0 0.11 here. So anyways, put that on the front of your path so it takes priority then. And then next up, I modified the man path here and the Vim runtime. Now I haven't tested to see if this man path was correct. I just copied this out of some example inside of the repo somewhere. Maybe I asked ChatGPT for it, I don't remember. Anyways, you update the Vim runtime as well. Point at the location here inside the repo, and then you should be good to go. You should be able to switch over and use this. And the neat thing is I've got it set up. So if I open up a new tab here, I just go back to the stable version. Of course, at some point, if I feel like it's stable enough, maybe I'll use the dev version on a regular basis. So yeah, that is the restart command. Now, the only thing you might want to do to it, look at my video yesterday where I talked about running the command that you were working with or developing. So if I were to come over here to my config here, and let's just say I'm working on, so let's say I'm working on this dev windows command here and I make some changes to it. Maybe I just break it here. All right. So I want to run dev windows here. Of course, it's not going to have the update. It still shows the dev windows. But if I do my F11 now, it's going to reopen and it's going to rerun it. You can see now it's not showing the dev window. So I need to get this updated to use the new restart then.